I'm going to be reading some excerpts from a book called Rivers of Living Water by Stanley Frodsham. God is always looking for the cooperation of those he has redeemed. Do you want a personal Pentecost? Gaze at the bleeding Savior. Drink deeply of the Spirit. Drink deeply of the Holy Spirit. Because of that blood, we can come with boldness to the throne of grace to receive this priceless gift of the Holy Spirit. It is very blessed to wait upon the Lord and tarry at his footstool. Waiting time is never wasted time. In the waiting time, God is shaping the vessel for the gift. Those were days of preparation in the upper room. Obedience will be rewarded with experience. To wait patiently upon God is your part, and he will not fail to do his part. Expect to receive right now, but should God see fit to keep you waiting, do not grow restless in unbelieving. Keep your eyes on God. He is faithful who has promised who will also do it. Praise him for the promise and praise him for the delay. He will not fail you nor forsake you. The Lord wants us to rest without strain, but there comes a time when we say like Jacob, Lord, I will not let you go until you bless me. In that wrestling, God will break something in you that needs to be broken. A broken and contrite heart he will in no wise despise. So often it is when our own spirit is broken that the Holy Spirit comes in all of his fullness. Praise has a large part in the reception of the blessed Holy Spirit. The disciples were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. The Lord has made a promise and he would not fail to fulfill it. So up from their hearts welled praise unto him continually. The Lord is a bountiful giver. Unless there is a continual renewing of the spirit, the life will become barren and fruitless. It is rather a constantly flowing stream of the river of the water of life that issues from beneath the throne of God and of the Lamb. It is an uninterrupted communion of the life and love of Christ, the most personal and intimate association of the Lord with his own upon the earth. Those who have received the blessed Holy Spirit are called to walk in the Spirit. There is nothing so delightful as the will of God. He has planned the best for us. He has provided the Holy Spirit for us to lead us step by step in the closest communion with our heavenly Lord until we reach the blessed heaven our Lord has gone to prepare for us. Corrupt communications and evil speech will surely grieve the Spirit of God. Remember, speak evil of no man. Before the Christian, there is a choice of the revealed will of God or his own natural will, which runs contrary to God's will. Oh, how blessed it is to yield the will to God to surrender fully to him and to choose always his perfect will. Here are a few suggestions for the maintenance of the spirit-filled life. First, maintain a time of morning worship. Ask the Lord to wake you up in his own time each morning and devote the first hour to feeding on his word and having sweet communion with him. Tell him everything that is on your heart. Cast every care upon him. Let his word dwell rich, richly in you. Believe everything he has said and seek constantly to obey every precept of his book. Throughout the day, keep up this close communion, Lord. You have provided living water for me, and in simple faith, I drink and drink and drink again. Tell this to the Lord again and again. Second, live in close fellowship with other spirit-filled saints. Third, Jude has an important word to say to us. Keep yourself in the love of God. Love is the atmosphere in which the spirit-filled thrive. David, the man after God's own heart, was a great lover. We hear him expressing his love in the 18th Psalm where he says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Love comes first and foremost. Tell the Lord at least a dozen times per day, Lord, I love thee. Loving him involves loving every member of his body. The spirit of the Lord is the spirit of love because God is love. And a life wholly yielded to him will not fail in this most important phase of Christian experience. Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. The thing absolutely necessary in every Christian's life is the Spirit's endowment. You need the power of the Holy Spirit to live for God. Covet earnestly the best gifts, but rather that you may be able to prophesy. God delights in communion with his children. Tongues is the language of spiritual worship. It's the language of praise. It's the language of love. It's the language of holy intimacy. It is so mysterious, so majestic. He that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. It is a God-given way to build up the believer. Hundreds can testify that when they have been alone praying in tongues for an hour or so in sweet communion with God, they have been built up and strengthened and encouraged in their spiritual lives. The Apostle Paul said, I thank my God that I speak in tongues more than you all. 
He learned its spiritual value and thanked God for the gift. He said, this is the rest and this is the refreshing. About seeking the Lord for spiritual gifts, be, be earnest. Second, be more earnest. Third, be more in, earnest still and you'll get there. Are you seeking spiritual gifts that earnest, earnestly? Andrew Murray states, we only have as much of the spirit as we have of love. There are two outstanding things said of God. God is spirit and God is love. Love is the very essence of his nature. And a man who is filled with the spirit of God will be filled with love, the nature of God. It is possible to receive the gifts of the spirit and afterwards backslide. It is a solemn warning that the possession of a gift is not always a guarantee that the possessor has a right spirit. Though a man have all the gifts of the spirit but have not love, he has nothing. The love of God is permanent. He urges us to follow after love. They that are of Christ have crucified the flesh with its affections and lusts. You must say to self, self you wretch, your place is on the cross. There you belong and there you will stay until the body of sin is in very truth destroyed. Say to Christ, O Lord, you shall have the throne of my heart. Take full possession of every part of my being. I gladly yield my all to thee. Take full possession of the territory of my heart and being. How may we abound in the fruit of the Spirit? The secret is given in the 15th chapter of John. Our Lord says there, I am the vine and you are the branches. He tells us by my father is the husbandman and gives us the warning that every branch that does not bear fruit he takes away or, or props up to himself so it can bear more fruit. Discipline awaits the true child of God. Every branch that does not bear fruit or every branch that does bear fruit he purges so it can bear more fruit. God's desire is that you would bear fruit that would remain. So he said, abide in me and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more except if you abide in me. Any branch that uninterruptedly abides in the true vine will bring forth an abundance of fruit to the glory of the Father. What is the sap of this heavenly vine which flowing into us will enable us to bring forth much fruit? It is the blessed Holy Spirit. That is why it is called the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Obedience to his blessed will is proof that we really love our Lord. If we do his will, we shall abide in him and his love shall abide in us. And there will be blessed fruit from our union with him. Note, he also says, if my word abides in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Constantly feed upon the words of the master. Treasure his words in your heart. The knowledge of the word is essential. We must meditate upon the word day and night. If we wanna be fruitful Christians, the man of God must be a man both of the spirit and of the word. We have not to get anything from or out of Christ, but in Christ to enjoy all of his fullness. He has not given us life as a gift. He himself has become our life. Are you conscious of a lack of love? Come to Christ, the fountain of love. The gauge of his love was Calvary. His love is perfect love. It is a personal love. He loved me and gave himself for me. On the day of Pentecost, Peter said, he had shed forth this as the spirit was outpoured, the spirit of love, the spirit of God who is love. We need constant renewing of his spirit. The more we are quickened by his spirit in the inner man, the more we shall be rooted and grounded in the love of Christ. One of the apost ap apostolic prayers in the word is to be filled with all the fullness of God. That is the fullness of love, and that is his will for every disciple. Let your constant prayer be, Lord, make me a great lover. Every day, open your heart afresh that the love of God may be freshly poured into it by the Holy Ghost. Remember David, he pressed on. My soul follows hard after thee. Did it pay? Yes, God gave him his request. There are many like Joash today, content with partial deliverance. They are not eagerly seeking the Lord for the fullness of the Spirit, that they may walk worthy of Him, that they may always do the things that are pleasing to Him. Receiving the baptism of the Spirit is a wonderful experience, but it is only a beginning. There is a need of a fresh supply of the Spirit every day. Be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Drink deeply of the Spirit. The natural drunkard drinks and drinks and drinks and not content with one drink. He wants more and more until he gets intoxicated. So, in the spiritual realm, we must constantly drink and drink deeply of the Holy Spirit. It is easy to get too much of the natural wine, but it is impossible to drink too deeply of the Holy Spirit. We cannot emphasize too strongly the importance of entreating the Lord for continuous supplies of the Spirit. Give us daily our daily bread. The psalmist said, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Each day, fresh bread and fresh oil. Job said, the rock poured me out rivers of oil. Ask for a Benjamin portion every time. There's danger of being satisfied with a meager portion, with a shallow experience. Some people testify that they received the baptism 25 years ago, and their testimony is just about that still. God doesn't want his people to live in the shallows, but to, to know something of the depths of the Spirit's power and flow. 
There are plenty more waters to come from the same source. When things are dry, it is a splendid place to challenge the Lord of Pentecost, for he has promised floods upon the dry ground. When things are extra dry, cry out, Lord, remember thy word in which you have caused your servant to hope. You have promised floods, and my cry is for floods, Lord, floods. I will not be satisfied until streams are running in the desert and the parched lands are turning into a place of abounding waters where many fish may be caught and where there may be many trees of righteousness bringing forth abundant fruit to glorify thee. How far will this river reach? The master gave the word, all nations. The promise in Joel is that he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Christ died for all and it is his purpose that the spirit of God should be poured out upon all. Let the love of Christ continue constrain you so you can say like Paul woe is me if I do not preach the gospel unto Rome unto Spain Paul longed to take the gospel where it had never been preached who will be his witnesses in the parts unevangelized preach the gospel to every creature who will go who will pray who will give will you I will be reading from a book called spirit filled lead and taught a word to those who desire to live a victorious life. The task of making us perfectly whole and perfectly holy in spirit, soul, and body is God's. It is written, faithful is he who has called you who will also do it. 1 Thessalonians 5.24 Trust the faithful one, he will not fail. Look away from yourself and from all of your brokenness and look to him who bids you to come to him and be saved. Receive from him, from him the salvation that he so freely gives without money, without price. The way to a spiritful life is simple. First, ask the Lord to cleanse you from all of your filthiness and idolatry. Look to him to remove the old heart and the old harsh spirit and to give you a new heart and a new spirit. Just take of the fullness of the spirit and keep taking. The baptism of the spirit is just a gateway into a life of continuous reception of the Holy Spirit. We are all made to drink into one spirit. Keep drinking, drink every day, drink every hour, drink every moment. Drink continually from Christ the fountain more and more of his spirit until rivers of his spirit are flowing out from your innermost being day and night, bringing blessing and refreshing and life to all around. Continue to believe God for the fullness of the Holy Spirit and for the continuous presence of the blessed Holy Spirit within, for his continued leading and for a life continually taught by him. Our blessed Lord Jesus came that we might have life and life more abundantly. And that means that we should be filled to overflowing with the life and fullness of his blessed spirit. Say to the Lord right where you are, Lord, I receive this abundance of grace and the gift of your righteousness to enable this day forward to reign in life by your own indwelling presence. This is the overcoming life. Remember, you have, cru you have been crucified with Christ at Calvary. Have you been to your own funeral yet? Today, put off the old man by simple faith and say, be gone, you rascal, you flesh, I'm through with you forever. Your place is on the cross. Then by simple faith, put on the new man. That new man created in Christ Jesus, just as you put your clothes on in the morning, clothe yourself with Jesus Christ. Christ said, except a corn of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it abides alone. But as you are buried by simple faith with Jesus, there will come forth a new life, a resurrection life, a life in which he is your all in all, a life of abundant fruitage. Now, Jesus, make this a glorious reality. Open this dear one's eyes nailed there on the cross with thee. Then see the open grave and himself falling into it and in forever to the old life. Cause a new life to spring up from this day forth so that in truth and reality this precious one may walk in newness of life. You no longer live. You have been crucified and risen with Jesus. God has promised to provide his spirit for you to walk in his statutes. Reckon yourself to be dead unto sin but alive unto God. I live, but not yet I, but Christ lives in me. In Song of Solomon, we, re we read, a, a garden enclosed is my beloved. Get over the, give over the whole garden of your heart to your lover, Lord. Hold no part back, not one bit of territory held back for self or Satan. Our bodies are given wholly over to the Lord. Romans 12.1, make the consecration and say to your first love constantly, Lord, I'm wholly thine, take full possession. Nothing will I withhold from thee. He will not fail to fill and to lead and to teach that one who is fully yielded and fully surrendered to him in his perfect will. Now, Lord, here I am, wholly thine. Give me grace to do whatever your will is. I yield my life to you. 
It is God that girds me with strength and makes my way perfect. Lord, I am willing to be made willing that every part of me would be fully yielded to your will. Lord, you are now my life and strength. Take full possession of me from this moment on. I freely yield myself to thee. I take afresh the victory that you give, and I trust you from this moment on to keep me fully trusting you. In Hosea 12.6, it says, wait on your God continually. We are to come to Christ, our rock, the fountain of living water, and wait continually on him until we are full and overflowing. As we wait on the Lord continually, he shall see to it that out from our innermost being, living waters shall flow, bringing refreshing to all around. You need to learn to wait continually on him until in God's own time, you come forth to do God's work in God's way. Paul went into the desert of Arabia there to wait on God until he knew the blessed Lamb of God so thoroughly and was so permeated with his blessed spirit, so fully that he could henceforth say, for me to live is Christ. As they abode in him and his words abode in them, they could ask what they would and it would be done for them. For as they abided in him, they became partakers of his nature. As you abide in Jesus, the living God, you are able to partake of his nature and the fruit of his spirit will flow out of you. Then he showed them how to maintain a life of constant communion. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. It is only that which is wrought in the power of his blessed spirit and love that counts. Let us wait on the Lord continually until through his blessed spirit all of our flesh life is mortified and drops away. In the measure that we learn to be still and know him, in that measure will our risen Lord be exalted in our lives and in our service. Today I must take from him a fresh supplies of the living water, fresh supplies of the hidden manna, a fresh anointing from the heavenly oil. Watch, however, that nothing hinders the flow, the flow of God's spirit in your life. Yours must be a life of continual waiting upon God to receive a continual supply of the heavenly oil. He who guides all the stars in their orbits can be trusted to keep us moving along in the orbit of his perfect will. I seek the will of the Spirit of God through and in connection with the Word of God. Just as we need food for our natural bodies, so we need food for our spiritual lives. Pray this before reading the Bible. Open my eyes, Lord, that I might behold wonderful things from your Word. As you feed on the Word, feed on the Lamb of God of whom the Word testifies. In this way, the word will become a part of your life and you'll become one spirit with him of whom the word testifies, Jesus. The word you eat from the word is eternal and will be a part of you a billion years from now. The meditation part of your word reading is what is important. Praising the Lord puts the enemy to flight. Rejoice always. The sacrifice of praise to God continually pleases the Lord. Just as the Levite to whom the animal sacrifice was taken brought death to its flesh, so will our heavenly priest, Jesus, bring death to our flesh life as we present our bodies to him. And then he will bring us into an abundant life in the spirit and into an abundant life of grace where sin shall not have dominion over us. Yield now your whole soul, spirit, and body to him who gave his all for you. I'm gonna read parts, excerpts from the book called Abide in Christ by Andrew Murray. The wholehearted surrender to abide in him, Jesus, alone brings the joy unspeakable and full of glory. It takes time to grow into Jesus, the vine. It needs day by day time with Jesus. If we are to live in Jesus, we must feed on him. Abide in me and I in you. I am the vine and you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him will bear much fruit. Continue in my love. These things I have spoken to you so that my joy would remain in you and that your joy would be full. He has destined you to something better than a short-lived blessedness to be enjoyed only in times of special earnestness and prayer, and then to pass away as you had to return to those duties in which far the greater part of life has to be spent. No, indeed, he has prepared for you an abiding, dwelling with himself, where your whole life and every moment of it might be spent, where the work of your daily life might be done, and where all the while you might be enjoying unbroken communion with himself. Was it the longing to know and enjoy the infinite love that was calling you? The first coming gave but single drops to taste. It is only the abiding that can really satisfy the thirsty soul and give to drink of the rivers of pleasure that are at his right hand. You did well to come to Jesus to ask him to be your savior. You do better to abide. Of God are you in Christ Jesus, 
who has made unto us wisdom from God, both righteousness and sanctification. Praying without ceasing is the one need of my life, an unceasing waiting moment by moment on the God who has united me into Christ to perfect his own divine work, to work in me both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Let that faith fill you with the quiet and assured confidence that you are indeed able to do what the Father expects of you as his child under the covenant of his grace because you have Christ strengthening you. Fellowship is where several persons have the same things in common. As our communion with him becomes more intimate and intense, we let the Holy Spirit reveal him to us in his heavenly glory. The more we realize how the life in us is the life of one who sits upon the throne of heaven. We feel the power of an endless life working in us. We taste the eternal life. We have the foretaste of the eternal glory. Abiding in Jesus, the crucified one, is the secret of the growth of that new life, which is ever begotten of the death of the old nature. Only when we are planted into the likeness of his death shall we also be in the likeness of his resurrection, partakers of the life and the power that are in him. It is as I abide daily, deeply, in Jesus, the crucified one, that I shall taste the sweetness of his love the power of his life, the completeness of his salvation, the entire surrender of all self-will, the complete denial to the flesh of its every desire and pleasure, the perfect separation from the world in all of its ways of thinking and acting, the losing and hating of one's life, the giving up of self and its interest for the sake of others. This is the disposition which marks him who has taken up Christ's cross, who seeks to say, I am crucified with Christ, I abide in Christ, the crucified one. He that established us in, God, in Christ is God. It is, is it possible for the believer always to abide in Jesus? Is unbroken communion with Christ possible in this life? We shall learn to believe that conscious abiding in Christ is indeed what God has prepared for them that love him. Let nothing less than this be your aim. To abide unceasingly is the portion of every believer. A life of unbroken fellowship with Christ is indeed our privilege. Each day we must thank God for time to grow more united to Jesus. Each day of faithfulness yields a blessing for the next. To attain a life of perfect abiding comes step by step. You can try praying, Father, I am in Christ. I now abide in him. Every sin surrendered is gain indeed room for the inflowing of the presence and the love of Christ. The path of entire consecration is the path of full salvation. The more perfectly the old occupant is cast out, the more complete can be the possession of the new. It is only into the thirst of an empty soul that the streams of living water can flow. Ever thirsting is the secret of never thirsting. How beautiful the thought of a life always abiding in Christ. We must experience truth in order to know it. If we wait and pray to be filled with him, he will teach us how to abide. It is impossible to live a life of abiding in Christ without being full of the Holy Spirit. Believe that the fullness of the Spirit is indeed thy daily portion. As we cease from self-effort, faith assures us that God is working in us. We must learn the discipline of stillness of soul. It is the soul silent unto God that is the best preparation for knowing Jesus. It is when the soul is hushed that the still small voice of the blessed spirit shall be heard. God's work is hindered through our interference. Our one objective in life is to enjoy the love of Jesus and share it with others. Let, Je let Jesus be your chief companion. Beware of the distractions that too many friends or companions can bring. Abide in the love of Christ. Believers are supposed to be the revelation of Christ on earth. Lord, show us what it means to abide in your love and the sight that you show us will so win us that it would be impossible for us one single hour to seek any other life than a life of abiding in thy love. Ask earnestly, earnestly for the discovery of anything that is not in perfect harmony with the will of God in your life. Each new sacrifice leads to a deeper union with the will, the spirit, and the love of the Savior. Abiding fully in Christ is a life of overflowing happiness. Rejoice in the Lord always. Regard the abiding in him more as an abiding in his love. With Christ abiding in you, the Holy Spirit sheds abroad the love of God in your heart, and you will love the brethren, the most trying and unlovable, with a love that is not your own,
but with the love of Christ in you. Let our life be one of self-sacrifice, always studying the welfare of others, finding our highest joy in blessing others. By his grace, the most commonplace life can be transfigured with the brightness of a heavenly beauty as the infinite love of the divine nature shines out through our frail humanity. Abide in my love, and love as I have loved. The greatest enemy of the abiding in Christ's life is self. Are you ready to give up self entirely to the cross? Depart from self, don't allow it to live. Allow Jesus to be your life inspiring you. Give up self once and forever. Daily renew thy consecration in the eternal life. Each moment has the power of eternity in it. This abiding life is one of perfect rest and victory. In glory, everything is holy and in perfect harmony with the will of God. The heavenly life of Jesus is the power that casts out sin.